Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News, our live edition. I'm David Knight with Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs. We're going to be covering the third GOP debate. This, of course, is being held by CNBC. They're going to be focusing on economic issues. They said they want to try to add a little bit more gravitas by focusing on what they view as important issues in the race, particularly the economy tonight. They say we're going to dig a little deeper into detail and specifics. I want to try to pin these candidates down on the specifics of their policies rather than hearing that they like puppies and apple pie, said Betty Quick of CNBC. But of course, we just saw, and I don't know if you picked up that feed, they have uh, protesters out in front of the debate. Giant puppets. Giant puppets. <laughs> I think that was, it was quite accurate. Quite that accurate. was spot on, don't you think? I, I think probably even a better metaphor than that was what happened today with the blimp, guys. That uh, runaway inflation that we've got with the blimp that came untethered. Yes. I mean, that, if you want a metaphor for what's going on with the economy in Washington, it's that out of control military blimp that went on a, <laughs> on a, on a, a power today. taking rampage. That's right. It, it cut people's power, which is exactly what's going to happen with the economic crisis. Well, actually, that's what happened today with the budget deal that John Boehner passed. Now, two big things happened today with the House. And of course, we're talking about a presidential race that's a year away. But mm -hmm. today, there were some major changes in the House. Of course, John Boehner was forced out by conservatives uh, this summer. Before he left, he decided he would have a hand-picked successor. That is going to be Paul Ryan-O. We need to get that hashtag uh, trending, uh, hashtag Ryan-O. I think we all need to put that out there because that's precisely what Paul Ryan is. He's another Rhino. He's somebody who has always supported open borders. He's worked to keep the secret trade deal. And that's precisely what's going to be happening. Now, today, they've not had the full vote, so it's not official, but today the GOP House voted, and they had 200 votes for Paul Ryan, only 43 for his opponent, Daniel Webster. So that's only one in six Republicans who voted against a rhino for House Speaker, somebody who's going to continue John Boehner's legacy. That means that 83% of the House GOP is just fine with business as usual, and that's precisely what's going on. As a matter of fact, Paul Ryan is very eager to distance himself from what's going on here. This is a, uh, an article from CNN. Uh, he says, all I can say about this process is I think it stinks. This isn't the way to do the people's business. We're going to be under new management. We're not going to do the people's business this way. And he criticized the closed door dealings. Except this is a guy who helped to ram through the TPP, the Trade Promotion Authority. Mm -hmm. And when people questioned him on it, he said, like Nancy Pelosi said, we're going to have to pass it to find out what's in it. And he goes, well, the people will find out what's in it once it's passed. Well, it was passed 23 days and counting ago, and we still haven't heard anything about that. Well, he's given these criticisms because he's not in the debate. You know, mm -hmm. if he had things to actually get out there on a the platform and speak to the American public, he wouldn't make these type of criticisms. Yeah, well, you know, we're going to see what happens with the Republicans. I don't think, and we all know, nothing is going to change. You've got Nancy Pelosi, you've got the White House, you've got multiple uh, speakers. You had the whip saying that he was a hardworking guy. Everybody focused on what uh, Melissa Harris Perry He's said. A Wait a minute, guy. yeah, yeah. A racist alert. Yeah, that's you racist. can't say hardworking. Well, that's you know, and, and you know, Rob, I yeah. think that was a beard. Oh, to exactly. Let you know, get people talking about the racism, so that that hardworking would sink into the subconscious. And the question is, is he really hardworking? This is a guy who says. Well, I don't really want the job, but if you twist my arm, I'll take the job. If you give me a lot of family leave, if you do all these other things. And then he says, uh, uh, you know, that, he, that he's going to, I don't know if he's hardworking or not, but the question is, what is he working for? And we know he's been working for open borders. We know he's been working for this globalist trade deal. Those are the things on which we have a single party in Washington. When it comes to destroying our sovereignty, destroying our economy, they are all on the same page. We have you, a single party. You know, and David, one of his big interests is actually poverty and he's like we're going to eliminate poverty and we, we saw what happened <laughs> when Lyndon Johnson tried to oh, yeah. declare a war on poverty now we have more poverty and that's what happens pretty much any time the federal government gets involved in any issue that's right and Coulter had a, a uh, an essay about that save us from the Kemp boys and of course Paul Ryan and the guy that he picked as uh, his chief of staff are both guys that go all the way back to being staffers for Jack Kemp and you're talking about that uh, Rob getting rid of poverty, that was what Jack Kemp was going to do with his enterprise zones. And of course, uh, all they've done has just been massive crony capitalism. It's been feeding of the bureaucracy. That's precisely well, what Well, if they saying. keep spending all this money on wars and the police state and then the NSA surveillance and all this stuff, yeah, they don't have any money to, 
tackle yeah. any type of real issues here domestically. That's right. That's right. And one of the things to watch tonight, of course, we're going to talk about the economy. How do you talk about the economy without talking about the massive federal debt? And today, what they did was they passed an extension of the debt ceiling. Remember when they did that before? Barack Obama said, well, we haven't spent any money, you know, just passing the debt ceiling. That doesn't so mean raising anything. the debt ceiling doesn't raise the debt. <laughs> that's right. It allows them to raise the debt. It doesn't technically. See, that's how they parse their words, you know, when they do that. Now, remember that it was in 2011 that the deficit was at, uh, at uh, sorry, the debt was at $14 trillion. Today, they have pushed it up to $20 trillion. That's a 43% increase in just four years. And that's what we've got to look at. That's the GOP elephant in the room that they don't want to talk about. The fact that they are on the same page with Obama, that they're both moving us further and further into debt. Oh, exactly, exactly. So, you know, like I said, we're going to focus mainly on this debate talking about economic issues. You know, I wonder what these guys have in mind as far as jobs. Um, by and large, I haven't really heard anybody talk about how they're going to create jobs and the jobs that they do plan to create are usually government jobs. Yes, yeah. like we mainly yeah. hear all these governors, I created X number of jobs. Well, how many of those were government jobs? You know, most of the jobs that have been created have been government jobs. Uh, most of the, if you look at all the jobs that have been created, uh, since we had the economic downturn in 2008, Jakari, uh, the number of jobs that have been created are equivalent to the number of immigrants, legal and illegal, that are in the country. So the illegals are getting all the jobs, and then right. Trump's going to kick them all out and build a wall. Then we'll yeah. get our jobs back, and the economy will be good. You're talking about federal jobs. That that was one of the things I was going to talk about, right? Want to raise work for the government? This is an article from the New American. Absolutely. Yeah, they said in 2014. The average federal worker made $84,000 compared to just $56,000 in the private sector. But if you put in all of their fringe benefits, it went to $120,000, 78% more than the private sector's average for yeah, jobs. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I think it was a, a city councilwoman in California who made more money than Obama when she retired. Wow. You know, it's, it's just wow. all these, this type of wow. bureaucracy. Just like you say, if you want to raise... Go work for the government. Yeah, absolutely. Except for the military. Except for the military, of course. <laughs> you're Except not getting any raise. You're just getting a lot of free shots, <laughs> a lot of hard. Because well, I'm you glad get a lot of free that. promises. There's because no, we hear, uh, you know, in the, in the last uh, in the last presidential election, you know, we heard a lot of times Obama would threaten not to pay the government if he didn't get his, you know, this or that bill passed, you know, the sequester or whatever. Oh, I don't know if we can pay the government this week. So as a former military man, Biggs, is that the proper word? Former retired. Former retired Army staff, Sergeant Roger. Okay, Roger. How did that make you feel like to hear that they're threatening not to pay the military? They do that at times. Yeah, it's definitely nerve wracking, especially you know when you're coming back from deployment. You kind of need that money to find a new apartment now because you've been gone for about a year, year and a half. And they're coming out and they're they're literally telling you like these you know briefings. Hey, you might not be getting a paycheck. They're not going to cut you anything not that's non-essential. They're not going to cut anything that isn't painful for people. They're not going. What they're going to do is they're going to you know, shut down the entrances to the parks when people mm -hmm. are on vacation. They they're going to not the pay the military. Yeah. yeah, they're going to do very visible things. Well, things that are going to cause so a lot of pain. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they shut down the White yeah. House to the to the public. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're going out taking separate vacations, sending the Secret Service down with the girls to uh, Cancun or wherever they went. Now, you're talking about passing this uh, this new debt ceiling. 79 Republicans voted for this. And guess what? Boehner and Paul Ryan O. Paul mm -hmm. Ryan O. Hashtag Ryan Dash O. Ryan O voted for it, even though he says that this is a, a, a really bad way to do business. He doesn't like the fact that it's done in secret or anything, but of course, he votes for it. Now, interestingly enough, tonight in the debate, and there's Rand Paul right there, Rand Paul has said he is going to filibuster this new mm -hmm. debt ceiling in the Senate. So we'll see. Tonight, if they really stick to substance, Rand Paul ought to do well because he's the only one who is really saying something different. They were just saying in the uh, JV debate that they just finished, uh, most of them thought that Lindsey Graham had won because he was all for big government spending on the military. Well, you can't do that and balance the budget. It's the warfare welfare state that well, is bankrupting it. You get that, that notion, David, because it's always like when it comes to the military, it's just a blank check. Whatever these guys need to get the job done. And of course, we want to be safe here in the States. But when we look at things like they blew up a hospital you know, last month and they send drones to blow up wedding parties, there's the big military spending, but very little military accountability. Yeah, yeah. And we always have to ask ourselves, just like when we look at, at schools or whatever, you need to understand there's a difference between a school and an education. You have to understand there's a difference between defense spending and actually being safe and secure. Mm -hmm. Just because we spend money 
left and right on the uh, defense budget because we uh, have more planes, more ships, more soldiers, more wars. That well, doesn't make us safer. In many cases, it makes us less safe, just like bad schools can make us dumber, not smarter. It doesn't give us an education to have a school. So we need to separate the or take insurance and health care, all of these different things. But it was interesting, the, the comments that we heard, and of course, so they're, they're still analyzing uh, the first debate. So we're going to pick up with this once they get the candidates out there and start asking them questions. But they hey, and one thing, one, one way people can participate out there watching live right now, we have uh, oh, about 2,000 people watching right now on, just on YouTube. This is also at Infowars.com forward slash show. But also we have a Twitter hashtag we're attempting to take over, and we're going to go uh, talk to Darren McBreen over in the Twitter area. So it's hash, ha hashtag GOP debate, hashtag GOP debate. And uh, that one's the CNBC G we don't want, well, we actually, we could take over that one too. We'll monitor both of those. No, let's but take it over. Yeah, let's yeah, go to Darren right better. now. Good. No, no, absolutely. We want to take that hashtag over. The hashtag, first go to real Alex Jones, and then the hashtag, use the hashtag GOP debate. And by the way, check this out. This is my own, this is our very own Twitter booth that we have set up tonight. And I will be monitoring the Twitter feeds along with Kit Daniels, who's going to join us later. And if you have, questions or comments that you want to send us on Twitter, again, go to Real Alex Jones, use the hashtag GOP debate. And remember, it is your comments and it's the links that you provide and even political satire pictures, all that stuff together is instrumental in waking people up. You got to admit, there's a lot of people out there that are still stuck in the false left versus right paradigm. So together we can use things like Facebook, Twitter, social media, to wake people up. So join us, join the revolution, and uh, let's get this party started. Again, GOP debate is the hashtag. Back to you guys at the Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, hey, Darren, there. I just want to make a note. Did y'all see the first, uh, one of the latest tweets in there? Bring that back up. It was from Planned Parenthood. Look at that. How are you going to host a GOP debate on a campus and not invite any students? Uh, yeah. That's all they have to say. Maybe they should be running around there twelve between their legs. After all this uh, information's been coming out with the people laughing about you know removing the baby hearts, hearts from bodies well, and watching them beat. I mean, just disgusting behavior that they seem to gloat about over and over again. So people need to take them to task as well. There probably would be more students at the university if they hadn't been aborted decades ago by Planned Parenthood and others like that. Yeah, at that. Uh, where they're holding the debate tonight is at the Coors Center uh, at a university in Colorado. And um, like I said earlier, uh, maybe they should all have a, a drink of Coors every time somebody says Ronald Reagan. That kind of yeah, they, they love the name drop there. They just <laughs> brought out all the candidates. So they're, they did their beauty pageant entrance. I guess they're going to take their stand behind the podium. And we'll get this thing started here pretty shortly. I forgot Chris Christie was even in this. This really depresses me to know he's still there. <laughs> so did all the voters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hoping that guy disappeared. Yeah. I don't think he's going to disappear, but you know, it's kind of hard to disappear, that guy. Well, th this is what CNBC is going to push now. They say they want to get serious issues, okay? When we were looking at the uh, subtitles here, and again, this is <clears> going to be like, think of this as your uh, DVD director's cut. We're going to be cutting in and letting them speak when they have something to say of interest, but we're also going to be talking uh, over them a good deal of time. We see the subtitles that are going on up there, but of course, what they were talking about was free college, Obamacare. Those are going to be their economic issues. And of course, a minimum wage raise, because that's essentially quantitative easing for the masses. Let's all give ourselves a phony monopoly money raise, and we can give everybody a raise, and we'll all be better off. Let's raise everything. <laughs> well, the thing, I just don't get that, you know, I can understand young people falling for this free college deal, but as an adult, you should know that nothing is free. Yeah. Who's going to pay for this, even though if that person isn't you, somebody's going to have to pay for this somewhere along the lines. And I don't see any big billion.